It is incredible to me how even people whom I respected and I consider to be talented, such as Stephen Colbert, with The Late Show is interviewing Prince Harry. So he comes on and he is being presented as a father of two. He has three dogs. He's a family man. He's an activist. What activist? What has he done? It's so unbelievable how even these people who I thought have talent and are intelligent, they get so infatuated and they become so in awe when the introduction comes to, I present to you the Duke of Sussex. Everybody wants to be around royals. Everybody wants to be associated with royals. It doesn't matter they're ex-royals. It doesn't matter the person has no integrity. It doesn't matter the person has no dignity. They want to be associated with them. He's not asking him questions. He's not challenging him. He's as bad as Anderson Cooper and the interviewer, Tom Bradby. So he comes in, everybody's applauding, of course, the Duke of Sussex, and then applause, 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 applause. You can see a glimpse of fear on Prince Harry's face because he doesn't know how the audience is going to react to him. Once the audience reacts in a positive way, then he feels more comfortable. He walks to go to the seat. He's so responsive to the audience, the person who wants to be private, who is not wanting the press, the media to be hunting them down. Now he goes on the late show and he's waving to the audience. Hello, audience. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? I am so glad the response from you is a positive one. How amazing is it that I'm being loved by you? Do you love me? Love me. I need to be hugged because I've never been hugged by my father, by prince then charles now king charles please hug me hug me hug me hold me and they go to chant his name harry 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 they go on the audience goes on to chant his name harry 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 and you see for the first time the smile in comparison to the other interviews he did with anderson cooper and tom bradby he so wants the love and attention of the audience he's playing to the audience throughout the entire episode he will acknowledge the audience because he's so afraid that he's going to lose them he's so afraid they're going to turn against them so throughout the whole interview you will see he is going to attempt to make sure they haven't lost interest can i be loved i need to be loved love me love me love me love me well played, sir. When he went to sit down on the chair, the seat next to Stephen Colbert, I don't know how to pronounce his last name of the guy, the interviewer, it doesn't matter. Prince Harry says, is the seat the spare? Because I want to emphasize what my book is about. Is this the spare? Yes, yes, that's the spare. So he is bringing his game to this interview. He's bringing his comedic timing and comedic talent. Prince Harry, the comedian. Cover says to him, you have written this book, which is very intimate. Instead of saying you have written the worst book, which is just gossip and melodramatic untruths, you're giving him credit for writing a book which is intimate. Are you kidding, Stephen Colbert? Even this guy who's been a career guy, an entertainer for so many years, now in front of the Duke of Sussex, the prince, who has so many names. Stephen Colbert doesn't know what to call him. Prince Harry says, you can call me anything at this time. He never says, I'm giving my titles away, so do not call me prince. You don't have to call me duke because I do not want the titles. I'm giving the titles back. We don't want to be associated with this family, the royal family, the institution, with their conniving ways of going about using stories against me and my wife with a fabulous acting career in the United States who had a B-list role on a table show suit. By the way, my brother William and Catherine Prince and Princess of Wales. They were fans of suits. They were fans of suits. And I was so happy when I brought her into the family because what I thought was, 
wow, I'm bringing this celebrity, this A-list actress, Meghan Markle. The only thing that I'm going to have to worry about is Prince William and Princess Catherine chasing her to get her autograph because of her fabulous career as an actress. No, she doesn't have a fabulous career as an actress. She's not even an actress. She's a B-list celebrity with one show to show for. You get it? One show to show for. You in your delusional mind and you in your fabricated reality you live in are considering her to be an actress. She's not. Take them back. Take back the titles. Why would it matter if I have the titles? What difference would I make? That's what he says in the other interviews when he's being asked, why not just give back the titles and go on and do your life and write your books and live happily with your family, with your fabulous actress, give the titles back. What difference would I make? The difference that it would make, it would be that nobody would give a crap about who you are if you give away the titles and if she, your wife, gives away the titles. That would be the difference. That's what those interviewers who were so bad in interviewing him and this one too. I am so in shock that he's so bad in this interview. Unbelievable. Then Stephen Colbert says, your life must be so difficult. I'm paraphrasing most of this. It is so difficult for you to be able to reveal such intimate details and to be able to be put out there in public because I know you are a very private man. Where do you get that from? Where do you get? He's a private man. He's never been a private man. He's lived in the eyes of the public since he was a child. Why is he having a problem with that since his life of privilege comes with that? You're a private man, so I know it must be really, really difficult. Would you like a drink? This is so difficult to hire somebody to write a book, to emphasize stupid events from your life that we all have lived but because we don't have the association with the royal family to have the platform that you have, you need a drink, you need a tequila, you have so much to reveal, and you're such a private person. It's so difficult for you to go on all these tours, to be offered all these platforms on the late show when people in Ukraine are being killed in numbers they can't even keep track, when people all over the world are fighting for their human rights, when people are trying to decide, do I pay for heat or do I pay for food? Because there is a lot of hard living done by a lot of people all over the world. This is not hard. Being Public, as a private man, give me a break. Promoting a book the ghost writer wrote for you by the use of his understanding of the implication of censoring the description of events that are so banal by putting those sensory descriptions around them in an attempt to try to give them some significance because there's no freaking significance to anything that you have said in the book. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're a spare. It has to do with you. Harry goes back to the audience. He doesn't want to make the audience audience turn against them so he's trying to please them he's trying to get their attention do you still like me is the subtext his inner monologue does he ever make you a drink because he's wanting to pretend that he's part of the people people's recognize themselves in him no leave the audience alone don't pretend the only reason that you're doing that is because you're trying for your own benefit to keep them liking you you're so desperate to be famous and you're so desperate to be in the public's eye, which is completely the opposite of what this guy was presenting you to be in the beginning. You are such a private man, so it's very difficult for you to be public. Lies, 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 untruths, untruths, untruths. Even Stephen Colbert, who's trying to stay positive, who's trying not to poke him and challenge him, which I don't understand why he's not doing, because like I said in my prior video, if you're not challenging a person who's not stable by playing into his lie of a story, you're not helping the guy. You're not letting the guy know he needs complete different help than the help that he's been getting so far. So you're not helping him by being partner to his incredible, unbelievable lie that he's telling about everybody. 
and about his story. Let me go back to my script that I've memorized and I've given to every other interviewers and I'm going to keep doing so, which is going to bore everybody out of our minds as it's boring me. He thinks of himself to know everything about everything. He talks as if he wrote the book. Oh, does it matter that now you were able to have the book come out? So it provides the context for all of the leaks that have happened before the book came out. Yes, of course, the context. We needed the context because context, as we know, context means everything. Because I am such a brilliant writer. I write. I'm an activist. You forgot to introduce him as a writer, Stephen Colbert. You forgot to, or Stephen Colbert. I don't even know. He's know it all. Now he's a creative person who knows how much context means. He knows the context he's provided is all false. Put a spin on them with the person who wrote the book, who knew how to do that by describing everything using all of our senses, our sight, our hearing, our touch, our taste, our smell. He didn't do that because he doesn't know how to do that. He learned that from somebody else. If it wasn't from the ghost writer, it was from ghosts, from ghosts surrounding his made up world. The fabulous actress with a successful career who was going to outshine the members of the royal family. Why go along with this mockery? Why go along with this farcical behavior from Harry's book by saying that you understand the damage and you understand the gravity and the conniving way the media in Britain you know what I think? These people want to be able to say, Duke is coming on my show. Prince is coming on my show. I don't think so. His life is so difficult because as we speak in the present moment, there's a campaign, there's an active campaign to make people not believe his story in the book. Nobody has to be actively trying to make us believe the book and everything that he says in it is bullshit we already know it we're smarter than that there's an active war this is at the same time the madman vladimir putin is killing people in ukraine and you're talking about having a heart because there's an active war against you from the royal family combined with the press to take your book down Nobody cares. Nobody cares about your book. This, the book he's referring to, this is the other side to the story. The royal family has been able to tell their side of the story. And this is my side of the story. They have told the side of the story for so many years. And I'm telling my side of the story. Do you understand that nobody would give a shit about your side of the story if you were not with the people who told the other side of the story as you so believe? Nobody would care. That's why you have the opportunity to come and tell your so-called side of the story. Again, he's so afraid that he's losing the audience. So now he's going, oh, are there any veterans in the audience? I'm sure there are some veterans in the audience. As if to say, you identify with me. I identify with you because we're all in the same. We're all in the same world. No, they're not in the same world. No, they're not in the same world because they live in reality. They have to get up and they have to make a living. They have to work hard to provide for their families. They have to think about what they're going to eat, how much money they're going to have to eat, as we all do. Do we have sufficient money to pay for all the stuff that we have to pay for? So no, don't try to bring them into your made up world. You and your bad therapist have brought up from the crazy space. There are veterans in this audience. Aren't there? Aren't there? Because guess what? I need to be loved. I told you from the beginning. I just need to have confirmation all the time. I just need to have confirmation all the time that you love me. I need to be loved. I need to be hugged. Hug me. Hug me. Hug me. Hug me. Because my father never hugged me. Even though there are pictures all over the place, the father, King Charles, was hugging him, was holding his hand, was doing everything that anybody can do. You can't want people to have the same comportment as you do all the time. Just because I love to talk a lot and because I'm I'm hyper all the time and I have so many things to say that I like to 
talk about myself due to maybe my narcissistic behavior. That doesn't mean that I'm going to ask my sister who has a different personality. She does a different, she has a different career than I have, that she's going to have to be comporting herself like I am. Because if she doesn't hug me, if she doesn't kiss me, if she doesn't talk about herself, then we have no relation as sisters. So now he's going into the segment in the book where he talks about how many people he killed when he was in Afghanistan. He turns that around to say, then them, them, the media again, by taking only the segment about that story and not allowing the context to be with it, they are publicly sharing this dangerous lie. The most dangerous lie they have told is that I have boasted about how many people I killed, putting it on them to be at fault again, when that's exactly what you did. The so-called context to feel the stories were taken out of make absolutely no difference now that we have the context around them. It's not like they took out something out of context. And now when the whole book was released, the context is telling us a story that's completely different than that first segment they leaked the dangerous lie the most dangerous lie he says danger because when people hear danger they're going to believe the monsters the people on the other side who are coming after me actively they're running after me actively dangerous psycho oh 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 or Santa Claus. The story is as unbelievable as Santa Claus. Oh my God, his goal in revealing the story of him killing people and looking at them as if they were nothing but chess pieces is because he wanted to give space. He wanted to give liberty to those veterans who are dealing with the same stories but are afraid to share them he goes back to that fragile subject of talking about suicide for him to say that he is going to be the person in this world who's going to help people do you people understand how this guy is seeing himself to be so much bigger than what he is if I were to go on a stage and if I were to interpret a character and talk about what I'm doing to be of such great importance to the rest of the world, they would come after and they would take me to the side and they would ask me, are you doing okay? How is everything? How are things? Because they would be afraid to tell me from the very first beginning Something is wrong in your thinking. What is wrong with you? What are you talking about? But nobody's saying that to him. What are you saying? You are contradicting yourself. One time you say you're afraid for the security of your family, but now you're revealing this and you want us to believe for the overall good of the world. That's how significant your role in this world is. Only somebody would say that who feels exactly the opposite. If somebody wanted to do all of the things that he's saying that he wants to do, he would be able to do it privately. He would be able to stay a private man the way Stephen Colbert introduced him. But here he is on the biggest platform in the world. How are we supposed to believe any of this? when an actor would not be believed in a fictional story. And this is meant to be his autobiography. Stephen Colbert goes to cheer again with the tequila that they have throughout the whole show. And of course, Harry cheers back. But then again, he remembers there's an audience. Cheers to you because I'm still afraid that you're going to turn against me because I know deep down inside that I'm lying. I know I'm not telling the truth. Throughout the whole interview, he turns to the audience. He cheers to them. He wants to make sure that the audience is still with him because he knows in his mind, people are going to wake up and they're going to be smart enough to understand that what he's saying is all false. Spending 10 years in the army, which is the most profound and the most dear to you, as you say, and is the period you felt that you were saved by the 
army family also has to do with you having the royal family to get you there. Even you having that opportunity you consider to be the most meaningful in your life has to do with them. Acknowledge that. I found my purpose there. The purpose that was given to you by the royal platform. I found my purpose on my own because I did everything on my own. So if you don't start with the foundation of truth, then everything else that you talk about, blah, 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 blah. Being part of the community, as you talk about, to feel like a normal person while you were a soldier. Do you understand that if people only have that, but they don't have the same family to go back to, the whole experience would not have been the same for you? You always know, you always knew that you had that privileged life, the family, the royal family. So everything else that you talk about, that it was so amazing and you felt different for the first time, you were able to just put on a uniform and that took away the weight of being a prince and a royal. Are you kidding me? So there's the question when Stephen Colbert says to him, you know, I understand that you feel bad, negative about the media trying to take you down, trying to take you down and trying to destroy you. But how do you feel about the people wanting those pictures in all the newspapers? How do you feel about the entire population having watched your mother, Princess Diana's funeral and crying and grieving? People want that. What do you say to those people since you're putting down the media and you're putting down the press all the time for bringing your life to public how do you feel about the audiences and the people and the readers who want that due to that princess diana was able to do all of the extraordinary things that she was able to do because she was given that platform public platform how do you feel about the people getting to know her the way they did to then feel like they knew who she was even though we're all so far away from who she was in our ordinary extraordinary lives how do you feel about that are you going to say something against those people? Are you going to say something against the audience? Because that's what he's asking you. He's asking you, how do you feel about this audience right here? It would be the same thing if you were more specific. How do you feel about this audience right here that you're trying to please so much by toasting them every time because you want them to love you? How do you feel about them wanting all that the press is putting out there? The so-called bad press. How do you feel about that? Are you going to turn against them? But he doesn't because this is the hypocrisy. He will only put down the people that talk about him, the truth. The people who applaud him as they are doing right now on this show, he's not going to go and put them down. If you are not okay with publicity, if you're not okay with being public, if you're not okay with what the media is saying about you, knowing that the audiences are part of why the media keeps doing what they're doing, which in your eyes is really bad, then you would be against them too. Listen, stop applauding me. Stop applauding me. I'm not here to be applauded. I'm not here to make you love me. I'm here because I have some truths that I want to put out in the world about my story because I think those are going to help other people. He does the reverse. Love me. Cheers. Cheers, love me, love me. Photographs the media was providing and all the articles, which I was so against. I was addicted to it. And I have to recognize that we get trapped into doing that. So he's putting it on him for the first time because he doesn't want to go and say to the audience, yeah, you are part of the monstrous action. The media is taken against me and my wife. No, he doesn't want to say that. So now he's putting himself in the situation by saying, well, I'm capable of doing that, but then I educated myself. What education did you do? Specific, really? Did you go to university? Did you go to school? What are you doing to educate yourself? He's become so selective about what he eats. He's become selective about what he does. He doesn't understand the actions are contradicting all of that, he says. Spewing and spitting. That's what he does. Oh, he is a know-it-all, full of himself, educated, spiritual guru who's going to save the world. The interviewer, to do this interview and not challenge the guy, go along with all the stuff that he's saying, that makes you look 
like a hypocrite. Your other guests have done something. They have talent at doing something. They are doing their work. They have a purpose. Why do you think people are so fascinated with your family? Which family, he asked? The royal family or my family? Nobody's fascinated with your family now. Everybody's fascinated with the royal family. So why would you ask the question, which family do you mean, Stephen? Which one, the royal or my famous, in my mind, actress, uh, Megan? No, the royal family. He says, because... My mother, Princess Diana, was able to take everything to a different level. How did she take everything to a different level to make people fascinated? Due to the media. That's how you became interesting to the public only because of that. Oh, which family do you mean? Which family do you think he means is intriguing the world? It's not this family that you have right now. Do you think the attempt was to make Megan leave or do you think the attempt was to break her spirit? That's a question that you're asking somebody who's a liar. Seriously, we had to leave. I had to leave. I don't think anybody thought that I was going to leave. How would my wife not leave? She had to leave because of the abuse that she got in England. There was so much abuse and she tried and she tried and then she had to leave because she had no other choice. She had to leave because they pushed her out. But I think what they did not think was that I was going to leave with her. And that shocked everybody. No. First of all, she left because she never wanted to be in England. From the moment before she met you, when she was going about trying to claw you down, claw you down by dragging you in your state of unfinished business with all of your past she came and she tapped into the little boy inside of you the little boy sad and in pain for his mother and she clawed that little boy and dragged that little boy putting things into his mind that were going to make him think of his mother she was using her mediocre skills as a b-list celebrity He's not that smart to be able to understand. He believes her. She doesn't have to use great acting skills, which she doesn't have. For Harry, B-list tools are enough to convince him. In all the interviews, he's like, nobody thought, simple, spare me. I'm going to get someone like Megan, a Hollywood successful actress. Everybody was like, oh, that's who's going to like you? especially someone at that level, his insecurities are so enormous. B-list celebrity knew how to come in. She had some B-list celebrity tools that she could use for somebody who doesn't understand what reality is. She was able to successfully convince. Unbelievable. I mean, the celebrities you are trying to associate yourselves with, think of them. They have a passion they're working on constantly to be able to bring creative projects we all end up seeing. Why is your fabulous A-list celebrity, as you want to see her, not doing any roles right now because she has no understanding of what it's like to be an actress? So stop calling her that. Everybody, stop it. Oh, you got to laugh, Stephen Colbert. Good for you. This is reminding me a little bit of uh, group therapy. He says, <gasps> put your hand on my hand. Close your eyes. <gasps> you still live in a delusional, made up, alternate reality. We've come to America. Oh, it's a wonderful place to live. America is the greatest place to live. We are so happy. We are so happy. We've made a life here. Yes, you've made a life here on the back of the royal family. A happy life. We're so happy. We are so happy. Then, since your wife is able to communicate with seals, <laughs> while we're voting, listen to the seals. Oh, communicating with Ame, he looks at her. Oh, she's magical. She has glistening tears coming down her face as she attempts to make contact. Needs a moment to herself to place her hands on the grave, on her knees, tearing down. The night thing, too. My late mother, who happened to be the same age, 
when she died as Megan when I married her with her head next to the cross on the grave. Harry, stay away. I'm communicating with Princess Diana, the grandmother, to my children, which I talk about as if it was the most normal thing in my life. Because I come from a world that was at the same prestigious level as the royals. So when I talk about all these things, about Queen Elizabeth, it was nice to meet the grandmother. And then Princess Diana showing it to Archie, that's your grandmother. As if this was the most normal thing in her life. Connecting to ghosts. Connecting to ghosts. I wonder what ghost wrote his book. Was it a ghost writer or was it ghost? Most of the words that he speaks in these interviews, in his book, they sound more like B-list wording. Maneuvered. Directed. Dragged. He's attentive throughout this interview to the audience because he's so afraid the audience is going to turn against them. And he's trying to hide by this portrayal with this facade of all the lies. Yeah, this is fabulous. Everybody's in the wrong. We're great. I still see him as a little kid dragged by Megan, the adult, through the streets of England, London, brought over to America so she can have the life that she always wanted. A lot of people are going to feel sympathy for the way that he lies because I'm sorry to say, but not a lot of audiences out there are realizing the manipulation that he is using and the sensory description of his events that he wants to make significant for people such as this audience member who goes oh he then reacts to that reaction because that's what's important to him oh somebody just went oh and i love that because that means that you trust me that means that you believe me because he knows that he's telling a lie so every time he gets a confirmation that people believe him he listens to it he takes it on because he knows that he's going to be found out for his lies I'll come later and I'll give you a hug. I've become a hugger. I love to hug. He's referring to the Meghan story, how Princess Catherine and Prince William didn't want to hug her when she was barefoot and in her freaking ripped jeans. Why would anybody want to hug you? I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger like you guys. You guys are huggers. So I'm a hugger and you're going to like me. You're going to love me and you're not going to find me out. You're not going to find out how dishonest I am and how ungrateful I am. His biggest complaint is that he was the spare and not the heir. And how was he going to deal with that? Can you imagine like you having the biggest problem in your life that you are the spare and not the heir? You are part of the royal family. You are a monarch and you are not going to be the king, but you are the brother to the king. That is his actual problem. Their motto, never complain, never explain. They're only saying that, but on their need, raise people up to put people down. They stepped on them. They put them down. Put them down. That's the motto. They knew that if you start to talk, you will embarrass yourself and them. They are against you telling intimacies about everybody else in your family. If you wanted to write a book, you could have done it about yourself having to do with your life. You could have done that. And you could have written it about the happy life that you've created here in America with family and your dogs. Why do you keep having to go back and use the same excuses and not focus on what the reality is? Maybe they wanted to protect you. Let the world believe you're a decent, dignified human being. I wrote this book. In comparison to them creating all the stories about us, this book, these are my words. They don't sound like your words. Let's see what she wants us to do. I just communicated with the dead. She wants us to keep going on the path that I chose, which is the one that's going to be. I'm taking you to California because I don't give a damn about your integrity. I don't give a damn about your family the same way that I don't give a damn about my family because they are not at my level now and I have no use for them. But I do give a damn about the A-lister. I'm going to invite them to my wedding even though I don't know them because I want to go back and I want to get with them so I can become at their level. You don't become at somebody's level because you are surrounding yourself with people 
at the level you want to become at. You must do something to get there. You must have something. I just made my point. When I said these are not his words in the book, these are my words, these are my words. And then he goes on to say, I can understand for the British people, what I'm telling you, being so intimate, it could be very jarring. Why are you assuming? Why are you always placing all these definitions of what people are and how they feel and how they think he uses the word jarring wasn't she the one who used the word jarring i'm losing hope when i think that all these powerful people such as stephen colbert giving these lies room to grow i'm losing hope and i say all the time don't lose hope because if you lose hope even as a character you have no reason to go back on the stage or in front of the camera for the next scene the story is over and i don't want to lose hope it's not even absurd situation because absurd situation requires for the characters to actually be basing their behavior in truth to heighten it with an absurdist behavior or play or scenario you know the base of it is factual in order to make it absurd. This guy is not even being challenged to talk about the same script. He seems to repeat over and over again, doing the same repetition with these people with such high platforms and such high power. To me, that is dangerous. When he says it's dangerous, when somebody leaks out fragments from the book he wrote without the context, to me what's dangerous is these people allowing you to come and to spew lies because you will make people believe and that is dangerous. Are you surprised? People are surprised. Are you surprised that people thought that you and your brother, Prince William, who's going to become king? Are you surprised we all thought that you guys were actually having a great relationship and now to find out everything that we thought was true was not? And you know what he does again? Turns to the audience. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Are you still with me talking to the audience? On and on and on. Why does he do access when he's responding? Is it because he doesn't believe what he's saying? And he's revealing that? Access. Access. Everybody believing the relationship between him and William was a good one. Well, yeah, because, you know, everybody has trauma. Everybody goes through difficult situations. But you have to put on a brave face and all the engagements that people have seen my brother and I do over the years, putting on the brave face and everything else. No, you were doing all of that. But then what changed wasn't therapy. What changed wasn't that you became the man that you wanted to become without the titles because you hold on to those titles. You don't want to give them away. She came into your life and she made you believe that she's an actress. So you don't even know that she's not an actress. Start with that truth. She came into my life and nobody believed that she was going to choose me, choose me, choose me from Suits. And everybody was watching Suits and she was famous. She was a successful career. She chose me. You're starting with a lie because she was not successful. She was not doing a successful career. She was not an actress. She was a B-list celebrity in one show. That's it. Why is the fracture of the brother and you being pinned on your wife? Funny enough. Funny enough. Why is it funny enough? Why? Doesn't it make sense that she came into your life six years ago when everything started to go? Shh, funny enough. Everybody's pinning it on my wife. Why? Character analysis. And if those are the facts that a character has in a script, I would assume that maybe that person who came into that character's life, when that character's life started to go down the drain, maybe that character might have something to do with the character going down the drain. Don't you think? Fight. The physical fight between... Prince William and Harry, how he fell on the dog's bowl. Necklace was ripped. What necklace? What necklace? Do you have the opportunity, comedian Stephen Colbert, to make a joke out of it like you would do with anybody else? So leave to the side that you are interviewing a duke. Leave your all. Bring your capacity as a comedian to catch this moment and make a joke about it. What the heck are you wearing necklace for? No, he goes, necklace, what necklace? I'm being so serious because this is such a serious moment about a necklace. A necklace. Oh, Oh, oh my God, that is so sentimental. That is so sentimental. And then I was thrown and he ripped my necklace, fell on my back. 
in the bowl of the dolls. You know what this reminds me? Going back to acting, Stanislavski is the father of acting that I talk about all the time. He was the first one to write the manual for actors, the first manual for life, I think. Most of the research that he did in observing other actors, he was using other information. He was studying psychologies and behavior of human beings to be able to understand how actors can behave more like human beings, not like actors. There's the Pavlov's dog theory, which is the experiment Pavlov did with dogs. He would put food in the bowl of the dogs. The dogs would smell and salivate and would come to the food. Doing that repetition whenever the bell was rung. So Pavlov would put the food in the dog bowl. Then he would ring a bell. The dogs would come. They start eating the food. Did it a couple of times. Did it more and more and more to understand how our senses respond to the events, how we respond to the surroundings, because that's how we live our lives, responding with our senses. It's just that we're not being conscious of it. So after doing that with dogs over a period of time, after doing that experiment with the dogs, the dogs would hear the bell ring and they would come. And even if there was no food in the bowl, they would still salivate. Stanislavski and then Strasberg was taking that adapted that whole understanding, the psychological understanding from that experiment, Pavlov's dog experiment, and understood how to attribute it and how to use it as tools for actors when they have to produce an emotion in the moment and the emotion doesn't arise. When I talk about the sensory work, I'm referring to the senses as part of the tools of the actor. For example, instead of using the bell ringing, as Pavlov used, if I'm trying to recreate an emotion, the emotion doesn't come out instinctively. I can decide to use one of my senses that I've experienced with in practice. I could go to use a sound from my life. Let's just say a closing of the door. A closing of the door coming to my mind right now that happened during a significant personal event in my life. So I don't have to re-experience the whole event in my life. The only thing I have to do is to focus on the sense of sound, which is how did the door sound when it closed? And the event will be automatically back. Due to the sound, I will be able to express emotion. Yeah. I always wanted to say that when he was talking about falling back in the dog's bowl, Pavlov's dog experiment, and how that's gone on to become used in acting, provided actors with so many tools in understanding how senses and our sensory work as actors can bring us into past events and allow us to have the emotional need the character is going through. I also want to say when those exercises are being done by actors involving the senses that I just described, those exercises have to start to be used by actors in safe environments. Yes, I've been able to do it uh, through the use of scent of my mother. He's attempting using acting tools, but doesn't have the method to understand how to use them. Through the scent of my mother, with the help of the scent of my mother, which was the same scent that Megan wore when she went to meet him on the first date or the second date. Do you see the craziness in this? They're not actors doing this. If you're an actor doing all these sensory exercises, it's for something. It's to be able to get into a character's life and emotional journey. They're not doing it for any kind of purpose, for any kind of betterment of themselves disrupting him. These tools are so powerful that when you use them as actors to create characters that are believable, they can disrupt people who watch those characters for good. They can give them a sense of understanding about their own lives. But when you use them in this kind of a scenario, when there's no higher purpose, they can be disrupting them for bad and manipulate audiences. Ask him, Stephen Colbert. 
What about that? Tell me a little bit. Are you getting any of the tours that you're speaking about, the sensory tours, from your Bill List celebrity? Does she know? Is she aware of these acting tours? He wants this freedom that he's experiencing right now, inner freedom. Authenticity means that you reveal stories without damaging people for the sake of getting money. If they would like their secrets to be revealed, not leak them for the reason of you making millions of dollars. That is not authentic. No. Stephen Colbert says, you say there's so many people with so many traumas in life. Yes, because life is traumatic. Yes, life is hard. It's difficult. Really? It was? Like you're not making any kind of difference between him with his titles who doesn't want to let go of. And the rest of the people, you're putting him in the same, oh, yes, life is difficult, as if he's part of life and so many people in the world. He's not. He's 1% privileged in the world. If you wanted to be hugged, Stephen Colbert says, and I'm assuming your other members of the family might have wanted the same thing. Why don't you hug? Why don't you hug? Because hugging is not everything. Why is everybody talking about hugging to be such a freaking thing that everybody wants? Maybe I want to be held in a different way than just hug. I don't like hug. I think hug is a mechanical, habitual way of greeting someone that's not intimate at all. So to me, hugging is something completely different than what they're portraying hugging to be. No, kiss on both cheeks. That's it. That's more intimate. In Romania, when a man meets a woman, they kiss your hand. I kiss your hand. They say that. That to me is more intimate than hugging somebody. So why do I have to be agreeing with what your concept of hugging is? Talk about yourself and leave everybody else out of it. What a reveal. I was being asked, how do you feel? And I would say, I'm fine. I'm fine. Because there's a defense mechanism. And I just learned to say I'm fine because I didn't know how to deal with trauma. I didn't know how to deal with my feelings, my inner feelings. Of course, because there's different scenarios. There's different scenarios and you have to adapt and you have to adjust to those scenarios. If I'm walking outside and if I'm going to meet my boyfriend outside, he's going to ask me how I'm feeling. I'm not going to say, I want to be kissed on both cheeks. Kiss me on both cheeks because I need to be loved right now. I want you to hold me as if I were a baby. Hold me as if I were a baby. No, I do that with my therapist where that is being provided for me to do it in. I don't do it in every scenario with everybody. It's different. Pulling up your shoulders, he says, today in the newspaper, it was said that I'm trapped in a cult of psychotherapy. And then he goes, huh, 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 huh. and then he looks at the audience again. Huh, huh, huh. Do you believe that's true? And you're just pretending that you don't because that's what it seems like. If a character went to do this to another character, if I were to sit here and to say, guess what? The newspaper was saying about me today that I was trapped in a sad life. Really? I'm not. <laughs> that's not true. Let me tell you, that's not true. No, he's not saying that. He's kind of like waiting for an answer, looking at the audience. Are they going to believe the newspaper? I am trapped in a cult, or are they going to believe me and my raising up my shoulders and kind of making them believe that it's not true, that it's such a funny thing that they would say, which is not true? Huh, double meaning. Oh, there's another slip that just happened. So he's talking about the mother, how he thought that she was gone hiding because he was in denial about her death. Stephen Colbert says, where did you imagine that she had gone? Um, hiding, he says, plotting, plotting. And then he says, planning. He catches himself and he says, planning. Because his vocabulary is so used to these negative descriptions of everyone around him, he considers to be his enemies. And now it shows you that he's mechanically trained to use that language to use those words and it slips out when he is being so careful about not using it with someone that he cares about and someone that he still wants to have in his life the spirit of his mom princess diana when describing what she was doing or he was imagining she was doing as i was imagining she was hiding plotting and then he realized he says no i don't want to associate plotting Subtext, subtext, inner monologue, he's going plotting, plotting. She was plotting. That's only when 
I attribute that word to the media. That's only when I attribute it to the royal members. It's not with my mom. So I'm going to change it to planning, planning, planning. Another slip. <laughs> you and Megan removed yourselves from a toxic situation. Really, he made you believe they were in a toxic situation. Toxic situation with all of the options they had to work and to be of service, to do something for a greater purpose than for themselves. And that's not what they wanted because she wanted to come back to Hollywood, but to come this time on a different platform. He bought it. He's buying his story. And then, of course, Harry has to convince himself because he knows that we're not convinced by saying, we did not go before we tried very hard to make it work. If you believe that's the truth, don't try to convince us. Don't keep trying to convince us because you're only trying to convince yourself. And he also says, we're still trying. You go out and you spew all the privates. And I don't mean private moments because private moment requires creativity. Private moment is used by brilliant actors. You revealed private, you revealed private, and you're going to get into more privates right now, aren't you? You are. I have to tell you, he says, writing this book, which again, he didn't write. It was the ghost, some ghost, ghost, Megan's ghost, some ghost. I have been the most vulnerable that I've ever been. Just because you've been the most vulnerable you've ever been, it doesn't mean that's vulnerability. You're comparing it to what? Vulnerable compared to what? Vulnerable does not mean revealing other people's vulnerabilities if they choose not to reveal them. Deal with you, with taking responsibility, with overcoming that vulnerability, getting out of the victimhood that you're portraying over and over again, blaming other people and taking the reins of your own life and assume responsibility for it. That's vulnerability. Private moments of other people who do not want to do therapy, who are not in agreement with your journey. You leave them out and you still respect their decision. They don't have to be you. They don't have to behave like you. They don't have to do what you think is right. You respect who they are as individuals. You don't reveal their private moments without their consent. And you're talking about licking? That's what you're talking about, this licking. You say that you have become so courageous. Courageous would be if you, when you say that you started therapy and you had a different emotional language, a different articulation in the way that you could express yourself and your family was on a different page you should leave that family on the other page and you should respect and bow down to their decision to remain there if i'm expressive as an actor if i'm expressive as a teacher doing all this work on stage and i'm learning all the tools that acting provides that allows me to get into my emotions and to bring them out it doesn't mean that i'm going to call my father he's a priest and I'm going to say to my dad, are you using your senses, dad, in the way that you preach? Or you're not? You should, because if you're not doing the same work that I'm doing, then we are going to drift apart. That's not the case. Courage to leave other people alone to do their life the way they seem fit. Don't keep blaming other people for not following in your stupid journey that seems so unsafe. What are you talking about? Oh, everybody has a choice, he says, but then he contradicts himself. But I consider them to be very dangerously in that behavior of not doing therapy. I'm paraphrasing most of this stuff. Take a side on something that you say and stop contradicting yourself. Yeah. The reason why he wrote this book, again, he is so much bigger than all of us and he's doing it to help his family because he doesn't want the same abuse to continue. He experienced with his wife, Megan. He wants to expose the abuse of the media by abusing his family in order for them not to be abused by the media. He wants to stop the abuse. That was the reason why he wrote the book. Does that make any sense to you? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what to say at this point. You don't know what to say because everything that you're saying is not true. That's why you don't know what to say. They're not telling on themselves. You're telling on yourself and everybody can see it. Do you not understand the more you talk, the less people will believe you? You might take on some of the things they're doing because their methods seem to work better for them than your method works for you. 
their methods seem to be much more believed, much more respected than your methods. Now he's going to go into a really private, private part. His penis. Yes, he's going to talk about his penis and the frostbite that he got on his tip of the penis. He's going to talk about it. And that is such an important thing in a person's life. And we should all be grateful for his vulnerability and his courage to reveal that so he can turn this world into a better world and turn us all into better people because we will have found out that his penis got frozen and was hard. Okay, why didn't you do this comedy act from the beginning, Potter? How did my penis get into the book? How long have you been waiting to ask that question? He says to Steven. And I haven't really been waiting to ask this question because I think it's such a stupid question, but I have nothing else to ask you. That's what he should have said because you've written nothing of importance or significance. So let's just try to finish this freaking long segment with your penis. I'm supposed to be here and pretend that I give a shit about what you're saying. So. Yeah, how's your penis? He's saying it's really hard to have this conversation about my penis because I don't believe anybody in the audience and he looks at the audience. I have read the book uh, besides me and you. He was expecting the audience to applaud and say, no, we have, here's the book, here's the book. Nobody's applauding, nobody's saying they bought the book. So he was like, again, trying to see who's bought the book, who's reading it, who's reading it. Nobody said anything. Harry, I see you, Harry. You want to be seen? I see you, Harry. I see you. Let's talk about the context of my penis because if we're just going to talk about my penis without the context ah that's not going to be good people are going to take that and they're going to turn it into something that's going to be dangerous because i've said dangerous one time two three four five how many more times do i have to say it what megan what how many more times did you say i should say it, megan what 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 ten more times okay yes dangerous penis i have a penis who's dangerous that's dangerous he was on a trip to the North Pole. And when did you realize you had a crisis at the South Pole, meaning his penis and the frozen penis? And if a comedian came on stage to do this bit, adding an artistic element to it, it would have been funny. If Stephen Colbert, that's how I'm deciding to call him, would have made a whole act out of this and not pretend that he believes everything Harry has told them in the whole freaking interview until now, if he would have allowed the whole interview to be with that element of artistry, with that element of comedy, it would have made the audience be on his side even more. But everybody's so stuck into trying to believe these insignificant irrelevant without any kind of artistry without any kind of talent or passion they remain irrelevant insignificant events no matter how much the ghosts have written in the book description of them if you're not going to make a comedy show out of it thank you so much please like 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 subscribe 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 the art of experiencing Mihaela. thanks everyone bye